Hey, what's going on, everybody? Lee Dickey here, and today I want to talk more about just the general subject, the general day in my life that most, if not everybody, goes through, and that is a trip to the dentist. Yes, we're talking about my latest trip to the dentist today. It was an interesting little adventure for me. And to be honest with you, I don't know. Who likes going to the dentist? Show of hands. I know you can't see me because I'm talking into a microphone, but honestly, who likes going to the dentist? That's exactly what I thought. I mean, I should probably be hearing crickets right now. I get it. It's the dentist. You know, the strange thing? I never used to hate going or dislike going, but... The older I get, the more I hate it, and the more I dislike having to go to the dentist. And it's not the fact that it's the dentist and they're going to poke and prod inside your mouth with sharp instruments that could legitimately hurt you in some way if they're not careful. It's the fact that my dentist is actually, it's legitimately like 30 to 45 minutes from my front door. And it takes me about that long to get out there because I'd have to get on, say, public transit. I'd have to transfer a couple of times, walk up however many flights of stairs that are astronomically long just because I live in Toronto and... We haven't all caught up with accessibility yet when it comes to public transit or, well, anything in general. And I, I just don't like it. You know, the older I get, the less I like to travel even around my own hometown and city. But going to the dentist this last time, I had to get a cavity filled. And whatever, no big deal. It's not like I haven't had a cavity filled before, like... You know, they hit you with Novocaine. It freezes or it numbs the spot that they're, they want to work on. And you're in the chair for maybe half hour, 40 minutes, and or even less, maybe 20, 30 minutes, something like that. They drill the cavity out, pop a cap on the tooth, tell you not to eat anything for like three or four hours or at least anything solid so it can set. You can probably have water if you're lucky. And that's it. You know, pretty cut and dry, pretty self-explanatory. But this particular day, and it didn't happen all that long ago, maybe a week and a half to two weeks ago for me now, it, it just, it turned into more of an adventure than I would have liked, okay? I went down a rabbit hole, climbed a beanstalk, probably fell off, and woke up somewhere drenched in sweat it was just it was a nightmare for me um it, don't get me wrong this dentist that i go to i've been a patient of theirs for probably 16 years now so it's not like they don't know me and it's not like i don't know them and normally they're very good you know granted you probably see multiple dentists and hygienists throughout the time that you're there but I mean generally they're all very good they all they're all very polite very nice they all know what they're doing which is always a plus because it's dentistry and you're practically a doctor so you would hope that that would be the case but lately at least my last say I don't know four to six visits it almost seems like the not the quality of work, but the punctuality has just taken a dip. You know what I mean? And maybe this is just me having a gripe. I don't know. But I'm a very punctual person. Like, if you tell me to be somewhere at, say, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll get there for, like, 9.15, 9.30. You know, if not, maybe even 9 o'clock. I'll get there incredibly early. That's just... that's. That's the way I have always been. That's the way I will always be. Like, I'm incredibly punctual. You tell me to be somewhere at a certain time, I'm there early. 
because the rule in my head, and I developed this in like my last couple jobs, it was I'd rather be 90 minutes early than 30 seconds late. You know what I mean? I'd rather be super early than even just a little bit late. And granted, you can't always help that because people do run late, I understand. But if you're constantly late, then that's a mark on you, right? It doesn't look good. And when people aren't punctual with me, that just irks me. It gets my blood boiling. It bothers me to no end. It, that's the, just the one thing that will irk me throughout the day. If one thing is off, then I'm completely thrown off the rest of the day for the most part. And I, you know, got to the appointment. I knew what I was in for. I mean, it's a, it's a filling. You're getting a cavity filled. They're taking a drill to your mouth. And they obviously have to numb you. So I get there probably 20, 30 minutes early. Hi, guys. How's it going? I say hi to the staff because we all know each other because I've been a patient there since like 2001. And, you know, I sit, I wait, I check in, I sit, I wait, you know. And I'm the kind of guy that if you're not on time, I'll start looking at my watch or even when i'm early like i'd like to get in there as soon as possible get this over with and then go home because i mean i understand that for the four or five maybe even six hours part of my face is going to be numb and frozen and unable to move because that's just the way getting a shot of novocaine works or like getting a cavity filled works and for those of you that have never had cavities I envy you, okay? Because basically what they do is they get you with Novocaine in the spot that they have to work on, wait 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes for the Novocaine to take effect because it's supposed to numb you and so you can't feel anything because with a dentist drill, if they basically take that to your mouth without Novocaine, you might as well be swallowing molten lava at that point because it not that i've experienced it but i can only imagine that it hurts like hell okay it hurts like there's no tomorrow and nobody wants that right so they hit you with novocaine and wait for it to take effect and then sit you back in the chair and get to work right but i'm getting ahead of myself i get to the appointment i check in i sit i wait I look at my watch. It's five minutes to my appointment. Nobody's come out to get me yet. Okay, no problem. I look again like 10 minutes later. Five minutes after I'm supposed to be in the chair, nobody's come out yet. Okay, no problem. It's only five minutes. No big deal. I look again, and it's a half an hour has gone by. Like, they're a half an hour behind schedule just with me. So... Basically, I'm supposed I was supposed to be in the chair and ha- half an hour before they came to get me. And I'm I'm upset at this point. You know, I haven't said anything, but I don't like having to get s- to be somewhere at a certain time and then have everybody else be late. I know that okay, it's nothing I can control, it's something out of my control, and I know not to sweat that, but still, I'm A half hour, 45 minutes away from my house. I had to take public transit to get to downtown Toronto. It's not the easiest thing for me to do. And now getting a cavity filled is a half an hour behind schedule because I'm still waiting in the waiting room and I'm not happy, right? Like I I don't like it when people are late. It's one of those things where it'll just irk me the entire day and at that point i just want to get back there hit me with the novocaine ask me whatever questions you want let's get started get this thing taken care of so i can get out of this chair and go home so they're a half an hour late i'm clinching like i'm grabbing the chair that i'm sitting the armrest of the chair that i'm sitting in as hard as i can just to give myself something else to focus on because I'm upset. Okay, I'm not happy that they're a half an hour behind schedule. And I const- I'm just continuously having to wait. Right? 
So finally, somebody comes and gets me. This is my appointment was at 10:30, I think, and they came to get me 11:05, you know, 11:10. So we're 35, 40 minutes behind schedule now. All right, fine. I get to the back of the the office, and it's a unit within like a giant office building in downtown Toronto. So we get to the back of the unit, which is where the, their uh, room and station is to work on my cavity and all right so i'm back there i've seen this dentist maybe once before because she came in to check my mouth after my last cleaning which was only a couple weeks prior because that's that's when they found the cavity they had to work on and they're just like okay we're gonna book you for a couple weeks blah 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 see you then we're gonna fill it and we're all gonna just go on our merry way no problem right so, but this is the first time she's actually had to work on me for an extensive period of time. And, all right, I get in the chair. She asked me some questions, like, this is your birth date. This is who you are. Do you have any sort of medical stuff that I need to know about? Yada, yada, yada. Okay, no problem, right? Standard fare, if you've never really worked inside my mouth or, like, know anything about my medical history, even if you've read my file. I understand you're just doing your job, so let's just answer these questions as truthfully as I can, and then get started. Right, that was the plan. But, didn't quite go that way. So I answer the questions, and she's like, okay, we're going to get started now. And she grabs the needle with the Novocaine in it, and gets me in the spot. At least, that's what I thought, right? So she's like, don't worry. Like She got me and then sat the chair back up. So we're waiting 10, 15 minutes. And she asked me, how you doing? I said, look, I can still feel the side of my face where you got me. So I don't know where it went. You know what I mean? So she lowers the chair again, checks. And I'm like, look, I can still feel my face. And I can feel your hand running against this, like my left cheek. And she's just like, okay, well, you know what, I'll get you again, right? So she loads up again. Of course, the hygienist is loading the Novocaine and whatnot. Hands it to the dentist. Loads it up again. Open wide. Ah. And then hits me in the same spot again. So this is two times she's hit me with the Novocaine. And I'm in that chair about 40 to 45. We're at this point where you know, 45 minutes to, we're approaching an hour to when I was initially supposed to be in the chair. So she hits me again. We wait 10, 15 minutes. Same thing. I can still feel my face. What's going on? But it, like, it started to take effect a little bit, but I was still a bit nerve. Well, I don't want to say I was nervous because it's not like they haven't filled cavities for me before, but for some reason, I just really didn't want to be there that day because I was just there for a regular checkup a couple weeks prior. And like I said earlier, the the office is like 35, 30 to 45 minutes away from my front door. And it takes a bit of finagling to get there because it's not like Toronto's public transit system is the easiest thing to navigate. And it's not like it's completely accessible, although I'm not here to talk about my gripes about the accessibility access of Toronto and its public transit system. That will probably happen another day. So I get there and she hits me again. We wait 10, 15 minutes and I just, yeah, it started to take effect. But for some reason, some reason i wanted her to start drilling but there was a good part of me that was like i don't know whether or not she should do this and the fact that like she's already had to hit me twice with the novocaine sort of set some alarm bells off in my head because i was just like normally this take one shot of novocaine and away we go i mean you can get started quicker you get started quicker i get out right and 
the quicker I get out of here, the quicker she asked me, do you want me to start drilling? I'm like, well, I guess she can, right? And she's like, you know what? I'm going to hit you one more time with the Novocaine. And if it doesn't take this time, I'm just going to put a temporary cap on it and we'll reschedule it and do it again. And the thing is, the the last, the first two times that she hit me with the Novocaine, you know, the first time didn't take, second time it took a little bit, but not completely, I guess. And I would rinse and spit between the times that she had got me with the Novocaine, right? And I didn't realize that, you know, there was parts of it still, like, lodged in my mouth. So as I'm rinsing and then, you know, swirling the stuff around and spitting it out, I see purple come out of my mouth. It looks like cough syrup. And I'm thinking, that's the Novocaine, isn't it? I'm just like, oh, man, I wonder whether or not, like, that'll have an effect on the fact that it didn't freeze. I, I have no idea because I'm not a dentist. I'm not a medical professional. And clearly, you know, this dentist is, so is the hygienist. They know what they're doing because they've done this probably a million times, right? So anyhow, the dentist decides to get me one more time with the Novocaine and then the whole thing with the, if it, if it doesn't take this time, we're just going to put a temporary cap on it and then you'll just reschedule and come back and we'll do this whole song and dance thing again because this is the worst tango waltz or whatever else you can think of. This, it's just, this is not the dance you want to repeat, right? And she got me again with the Novocaine the third time, and it finally took. I was petrified that I'd actually have to reschedule, right? Like, I didn't want to be there that specific day in the first place, because who wants to go to the dentist twice in two weeks? Granted, my first time was for a regular cleaning, and that's when they found the cavity, but nobody wants to go to the dentist twice in two weeks it is it's just a nightmare right and like i said i know you know what i understand that everybody's got a job to do and they're just there to fill a cavity for me but that doesn't mean that i have to like the travel part both going to and from their offices nor do i have to like the fact that my face is numb after the cavity because of the, the Novocaine, and I can't eat any solid foods for probably four or five hours, right? I'm a guy that likes to eat. I love food. I resemble the remark of good cooking, or the mark of good cooking, I should say, because, I mean, a bit of a spare tire. No, I have no shame. I understand. It's Thankfully, it's not as big as a truck tire. It fits maybe on a subcompact now, but still, I like to eat, right? So when you freeze me, or at least do something to me that causes me not to eat solid foods for a little bit, I it, that irks me as well. I mean, punctuality is just one of those things, but not being able to eat is another thing where I'm just like, I can't believe it. And thankfully, I had had a good solid breakfast that morning, so I wasn't that hungry but when I got home I think um my mom had cooked up some pizza and she was like you want some I'm like I can't eat right now I, I really can't eat until this stuff wears off I don't feel comfortable eating until like the Novocaine wears off granted the dentist told me it would probably take four or five hours and I'd probably been out of the house, by the time I got back, I'd probably been out of the house maybe five hours at that point. But after all the finagling with the dentist and being behind schedule, I probably, they probably didn't even start on my tooth until close to maybe 11, 30, 12 o'clock. After all that, you know, the way, the, the Novocaine, not taking, waiting doing it again and I just I was like you know what I'll, I'll eat later I'll eat at dinner so I went through my day and just 
you know, and I would occasionally just check on my face by you know rubbing my hand against my cheek. And the entire day after having your face frozen because of a cavity or because they uh, popped you with Novocaine because they legitimately have to stick a drill in your mouth and drill out the cavity and then cap it, it's not fun, right? Like, I granted, I understand it's my fault that I have a cavity because I ingested a lot of junk. I love to eat any, I will eat anything provided it doesn't harm me in any way, right? And I, I have a massive sweet too, so that's half the problem too, you know, or like the major problem is that I love sweet stuff. Thankfully, I've in the last few weeks, I've learned to curb my caloric intake, my intake of sweet stuff, my intake of stuff that people, quote unquote, say is bad for you. Although I will always say that it's the good stuff. I just have to enjoy it in moderation now. Boo earns. You know, and um, once I, I got that cavity filled whatever and it's weird you know because in times in the past where i've had to get a cavity filled i could feel it right like i could feel the cavity because it hurt i could feel pain whenever i brushed my teeth or did anything like floss or run a mouthwash through it i could feel the pain in my younger years now that i'm in say my late 20s now you know, I'm I'm older. I like they they would wait until I would call them and tell them, "Hey, I got a cavity or something's wrong. I need to come see you guys." Right? They would wait until I felt enough pain to the point where I couldn't take it anymore when I was younger. But now it's like I don't feel anything and they're like, "You got a cavity in there. We got to fill it." Like almost right away. And it surprises me. I don't know why. Maybe it just, it. I don't feel anything. They're like, well, most people, they don't feel anything until it gets to the point where, you know, root canal. And I'm like, no, no, no. Okay, I'll tell you what. As much as I don't want to come in two weeks after the cleaning, we'll do that. You'll fill it. And I'll get back to normal. I'll just have to stop eating junk food and sweet stuff as much as I used to. And I'll have to watch my intake and just just to make sure that everything is fine. And you know what? I, I think we've gotten to a point now where the fact that I'm older, it is time for me to start watching what I eat more and paying attention to A, my caloric intake, B, the amount of sweet or salty stuff like chips and chocolate and cookies and that sort of thing, that type of stuff that I take in. And, you know, just... After having to go through three shots of Novocaine and then not having been able to eat for almost like 12 hours, it was just, oh, it was not a fun, fun experience for me. And I, I just, you know, having to travel on this winding Toronto transit subway system to get from where I live to downtown Toronto, which is about a half hour, 40 minutes. It it was a mess for me, you know, and I understand that everybody's just doing their job. But when you're constantly like, like, I, like I said earlier, they were about 30 to 45 minutes late to getting me into the chair to actually start the f process for the filling. That's not the first time that's happened. It's happened on more than one occasion. And I've just I get to a point where it's like if you're not punctual, then what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like that'll, that'll bother me to no end when people are not punctual, especially when it comes to, I just want to get this cavity filled and go home because the fact that I have to travel 30 to 45 minutes to get to the actual office via Toronto's public transit system is not a fun experience for me. The thing is, I'm not a big fan of going downtown in like a major city because that means a mass amount of people. It just means that I'm in the middle of a massive crowd 
And I hate that feeling. You know, I know that I perform and entertain for a living. That's different. I'm up on stage. I'm entertaining a crowd of 5, 10, 15, 20, sometimes upwards of three to 4,000 people, if not more, right? That is different than being plopped in the middle of a crowd, just trying to make your way through, get down to the subway with my walker, mind you, and go home. You know, and Toronto's transit system, as many improvements as they've as they've made over the years, is not completely accessible accessibility friendly. It's not all that accessible yet, although they are making the upgrades and whatnot. And I'm happy that they're making the upgrades. I'm just saying that it's not completely accessible and having to deal with just this massive horde of people at say something like 12 or one o'clock or even at any point that I'm downtown, if I have to deal with a massive amount of people going in one direction while I'm trying to go the other way, it's not cool. You know what I mean? And then there was the, Hey, let's get them three times with the Nova cane. And at that point I'm thinking, Oh man, cause I didn't want to come back again. Right. So thankfully the third time took with the Nova cane, she filled the cavity and that was another thing. Um, during the actual appointment, she asked me several questions. Just, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Like, she would check her work after we were done. Like, just bite down for me. Like, how do you bite? How do you chew, right? And um, there were a couple times in there where, like, I could smell burning because the drill, right? She's really working the drill. And I smelt burning. So I was, that's one of those things where I get nervous a little bit. You know, if I smell burning and it's actually in my mouth. So it, a little bit, you know, your security is a bit, you're on high alert at that point. It, you know, that was the experience of me getting the cavity filled. And she, I remember she asked me that uh, if, how I felt or how I was doing constantly, right? And one one specific time, she had her, thankfully they were gloves, um, she had one of her hands rested against, like in between my lips. She all, and my mouth's wide open, right? Because she's still got to work on me on the inside. And she asked me a question that, it wasn't just a uh-huh or uh-uh. It wasn't just a yes or no answer. I legitimately had to answer the question thoroughly and with more words, right? With more of a vocabulary than just uh-huh, uh-uh, yes, no, it, right? So she asked it, and I didn't, I forgot for a split second that her hand was resting between my lips. And it was like one of her fingers was be just about between my teeth. So I start to answer and I accidentally bit down. Thankfully, I stopped. I didn't get her too badly. But then she just sort of went on and went, hey, don't bite me. And I went, I'm thinking this because I just want to get out of there, right? At that point, I didn't say this to her, but I'm thinking this in the back of my head. Just like, well, you asked me a question that wasn't a, the was required more than just a yes or no answer and you've got your hand basically resting in my mouth so when i answer and i bite down like whose fault is that right i'm not the one that's got my hand resting there why do you why do you have your hand resting there if you know you're going to ask me a question that requires more than just uh-huh or uh-uh more than just a yes or no answer what are you doing that for? Right? Um, but all in all, there's just this, no, there's, it was more than what I bargained for getting that cavity filled. I didn't expect to get pumped full of three shots of Novocaine just to get one cavity filled. I don't know where, she, where the Novocaine went after the first two times. I have no idea. Right? Like, because I know she hit me with it, but it just didn't take. I don't know why. Because that's the first time that that's happened to me. And 
I'm honestly surprised because normally it's just one shot. Let's get let's lay this kid back and then let's get started. I it it boggles my mind even now that uh, it took three shots of Novocaine to numb me just to get a cavity filled. Uh, either way, I mean, it was it got done. I was happy because I was done and I could go home. I mean, I understood that the Novocaine would wear off, but I, that was just an interesting day for me. Getting a cavity filled, the three shots of Novocaine, and then having it take you know, having them be behind schedule a little bit and me not liking the fact that people are behind schedule, even though I know I can't control that. And it's, it just turned into more than what I bargained for, more than what I asked for, more than what I wanted. And it was just an interesting day all around, but that's the story of my latest trip to the dentist and getting my latest filling and, you know, getting my latest cavity filled. It was an interesting day, to say the least. Have you guys ever had any experiences like that? Let me know. Remember to please comment, like, share, and subscribe. This has been fun. This has been another video on Lee Dickey Beats and Speaks. Like always, I have been Lee Dickey, your esteemed host. And there will be more of these, I promise. The second I can pull stories out of my life of lee archives shall we say right there's no script to these there's no format it's just me talking into the mic and giving you the stories to the best of my recollection to the best of my ability i hope you guys enjoy them please comment like share and subscribe and of course as always i've been lee dickey this has been another segment on lee dickey beats and speaks but we will see you all next time. All right. I'm out of here. We'll talk later. Peace.